Hi guys, um, hope you've been doing well. Well, the last couple of weeks were a little challenging for me, but um, thanks to your warm wishes, I'm feeling much better now. So let's uh, kick off our webinars once again. And we'll start with a quant webinar today. We'll discuss sequences and series. Um, I hope you've gone through the videos and the modules of sequences and series. They're, they're not very hard, right? They, so, you know, what is a sequence? Essentially, it's just a bunch of terms and they are in order, but there's a pattern to them, right? And what a series, series is, again, a series is just a sequence in which the terms of the sequence are added together. So then we call it a series. So essentially, they're just the same. So for example, if we're given a sequence and we are asked for the sum of the first 10 uh, terms of the sequence, it becomes a series question. Now, the only thing, the only new thing in GMAT focus is that they have also introduced that sigma symbol, right, the summation. But it just tells us that the terms are added. Let's say if I say sigma r is 1 to n, that means this is t1 plus t2 plus t3, right? Just about that nomenclature. You don't have to worry about it. It's pretty simple. Right? Otherwise, don't worry. I mean, a series is nothing but adding the terms of a sequence, right? Okay, now there are two types of questions that we get in sequences and series. One, in which we are given the relation between the terms. So then we have to write down the first few terms and figure out the pattern. Or another, in which the first few terms are given to us and we have to figure out the pattern. So we'll take a look at both kinds of questions today, right? So let me share my screen with you. For each positive integer n, the mean of the first n terms of the sequence is n. You know, they have written it to confuse you. You would be like, okay, so n integers, mean n, you know, sequence n terms, what is given to us? But you don't have to. As I said, when a relation is given to you, we have to write down the first few terms. Don't worry about anything. Just write down the first few terms. It will become clear to you the moment you start doing that, right? Okay, for each positive integer n, so positive integer, it means that we are starting from 1 and 2 and 3, etc. The mean of the first n terms of a sequence is n. So I'll say, okay, the mean of the first one term of the sequence is 1. That is what, you know, as I said, I have to write down the numbers of the sequence. So then I'll start putting n equal to 1. So I say mean of the first one term, first term, which means, right? So first term, one. Mean of one term is one. That means the first term has to be one. It can't be anything else, right? If I say mean of one number is 20, what is that number? Well, it has to be 20. It can't be 19. One number, 19, cannot give me a mean of 20, isn't it? I need at least two numbers for that. In, excuse me. If one number is 19, the other will be 21. Okay. Okay. So then coming back here. So I'm given that since mean of the first one to one term, that is the first term is one, the first number must be one. Now put n equal to two next. Mean of the first two terms. I know this is my first term. I'll write this as T1. Now here is my T2. Mean of the first two terms is two, is n, which is two now, right? We put n equal to two. So then the mean of Two numbers is two. One of the numbers is one. What is the next number? Obviously, three. It can be nothing else but three, right? When I have a mean of two, this number is deficit by one. That means the other number has to be excess by one, right? Go back to your arithmetic mean. Go back to dis your discussion on averages that the deficit has to be equal to the excess from the mean, right? So I've got my T2 also, great. Now, next I have to have my T3. I still don't know what the pattern is. I, I've got one three, let me see what's going on. The mean of the first three terms of a sequence, so the first three terms are T1, T2, T3. So mean of these three terms is N, which is three, now my N is three. So then this is the mean of these three terms. Well, if this is the mean of three terms, you know, this number is 2 less than 3. So then this number will be 2 more than 3, which means it's going to be 5. It can be nothing else, right, for the mean to be 3. Okay, I seem to be getting a pattern. Great, maybe I'll just try one more number just to be sure. But 
you know, I see that I'm getting odd positive integers. Great. Let's try T4 now. Mean of the first four terms of the sequence. So one, two, three, four. Mean of all these is four. Okay. Four is over here. Mean of these four terms is four. Now, this is one less. This is one more. This is three less. Now, for my deficit to be equal to the excess, this number has to be three more. This must be a seven. Right? So then do I see the pattern now? Now it is pretty obvious. It's very clear. What is the pattern? One, three, five, seven. So basically, the odd integers, consecutive positive odd integers is my sequence. So my sequence will, will be one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? This is my T1, this is my T2, this is my T3, this is my T4, this is my T5, this is T6, this is T7. Now, if I ask you, okay, what is T100? I said that I should be able to predict any term. I say I've found the pattern, I should be able to predict any term. I look at the relation. Yeah, how do I find what is the relation between the terms, right? How do I find... If I have a T100, what number is over here? Yeah, think about that now. These are odd integers. All right, forget this. Let's first look at even integers. For example, if I had 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, etc. This is, say, my T1. You know, I'm looking at a different sequence, just giving you an example of different sequence to help you see the relation. T4, T5. Do you see, now if I say, okay, T100, what is this number? Can you predict that? Can you tell me what this number is? It, it's not going to be very hard, right? You see that each number is double of this, isn't it? When I say that there is this, you know, what is T3? That number is six because I'm only dealing in even integers, right? So then my T100 is going to be what? Simply 200. Make sense, right? What is happening over here? Here I have all odd integers, right? So then when I have a T7, this is not a 14, but one less than the 14. When I have a T6, this is not 12, but one less than 12. T5, this is not 10, one less than 10. So with odd integers, the relation is 2n minus 1. Your Tn is equal to 2n minus 1, except for the first term. Of course, that is 1. Yeah. So then if I have a T100, I have to find T100. What will I do? I'll say T100 is simply 2 into 100 minus 1. Right. So I can find any term of the sequence now. Okay. What is the 2008 term of the sequence? This is pretty simple now. So then T2008 is going to be nothing but 2 into 2008 minus 1 which will give me 4015, right? So this will be my answer. So again, don't get confused. They're going to write it to confuse you, but you don't have to. The only tricky part of this question is this. Otherwise, you know that it's fairly simple, right? That, you know, mean of n terms is n. But you don't have to worry. Put n equal to 1. Put n equal to 2. Put n equal to 3. Find out the first few terms, and this will always work when you have when you're given a relation. <clears throat> okay. Any questions over here? Are we good with this question? <clears throat> 